It's yet another normal day in school for Yamada Ryu, who is getting reprimanded by a teacher for his terrible academic performance and behavioral problems. That's just another casual Monday for Yamada, who has made quite the bad name for himself in school being late, leaving early, fighting with other students, and sleeping in class. If there's a rule that needs to be broken, Yamada will find a way to break it. The lecture from the professor goes on and on, and naturally, he finds the lecture boring, which infuriates the teacher even more. Their conversation, however, is interrupted by the arrival of Shiraishi, the model student at the school, who hands over the class journal to the teacher. The teacher's mood immediately lightens up, but after Shiraishi leaves, the teacher becomes angry again and tells Yamada to learn from her example of good behavior and excellent grades. She's like an anti-version of them, a complete opposite from gender to characters, and that is why Yamada detests her so much. After being dismissed by the teacher, Yamada walks through the hallway and it seems he isn't really the cool guy even after being the center of attraction for all his mischief. The other students keep their distance and gossip about him being the second year problem child. Now Yamada is annoyed. After all, he didn't want this to continue. He had promised himself that from high school he would change and become better, and he had, to some extent, but the reputation he had in middle school had followed him here as well. While walking filled with anger, he runs into Shiraishi, and her mere sight annoys him. He walks faster to avoid the girl, but her sharp gaze catches him off guard, and he falls right into her. Yamada falls for her, or on her. Either way, it's awkward. Yamada wakes up in the nurse's office and is surprised to find out that he's still alive. However, being alive is the least of his concerns for when he gazes down. He notices a pair of balloons surgically attached onto his chest, and it seems these guys are real. He had not only landed on Shiraishi, he had quite literally become her. In disbelief, Yamada rushes to find Shiraishi, who is now in his body, attending class and taking notes diligently. It seems she has actually taken all of this quite well and doesn't seem phased by the fact that she's a boy. Yamada pulls her out of her desk and asks what's going on and why they switched bodies. Shiraishi calmly replies that she doesn't know, but she knows how to get them back to normal. Well, that doesn't sound at all suspicious now, does it? Her plan, however, does carry some sense, if you take it from a movie perspective. She supposes that their body switching situation might have originated from them falling down the stairs, so they need to do the same thing again. Yamada is down with a plan and wants to immediately jump down the stairs with her, but the girl is not really on board with the idea. Well, at least for now. She tells him that she still has a few classes left and can't go through the whole process of fainting and getting up again. Yamada becomes frustrated and asks if she plans to stay this way forever, but Shiraishi wants to become herself as soon as possible as well, because she isn't quite fond of the thing that's between her legs, no matter how small it may be. Ouch. After class, something weird happens. If all of this wasn't weird enough already, they decide to fall down the stairs and do so, but this time nothing happens until Shiraishi remembers that the last time they happened to kiss. Shiraishi insists on kissing Yamada, who initially resists but eventually gives in. Surprisingly, their bodies switch back to their original forms after the kiss. They would have thought the whole ordeal was now over, but unfortunately for them, a quite nosy schoolboy from the student council witnesses the event. Turns out they didn't really need to jump over a literal staircase to get back to their original forms. This makes Yamada come up with a plan to use this power to perhaps get back his ruined reputations. He even manages to convince her to join his cause since whenever Yamada is in her body, he makes sure that her bullies stay away and remember not to bother her. Later, Yamada makes them switch bodies so that Shiraishi could take the supplementary exams for him while he relaxes. He is, in fact, doing what he had promised, aka relaxing with his burgers when Miyamura appears out of nowhere and asks him for a date. Turns out he and Shiraishi had already agreed upon a date. Yamada agrees without much of a protest and the two head out. On their way, three boys appear and start flirting with Yamada. They make him a bit too uncomfortable and that was a mistake. Yamada for a moment forgets that he isn't in his original body and beats the crap out of the boys. After witnessing the ordeal, Miyamura comes clean and reveals that there was never a promise for a date and that he was sure now that Yamada was inside Shiraishi's body. Later, Shiraishi finds out that Miyamura knows their secret and fears what he will do to them. Will he complain to the teachers? After all, they had been cheating. However, Miyamura seems to have other ideas. Instead of complaining, he offers them a room to switch their bodies, which is in the room for the Supernatural Student Club. The club has been discontinued long ago, but he wants to resume its activities now that there was an actual supernatural activity happening in school. Miyamura also seems to have found some interesting details about this whole thing. He kisses Yamada and surprisingly switches bodies with him. Turns out the whole falling from stairs was not even necessary. It was Yamada who had the power so anyone who kissed him would switch bodies with him. He verifies the power himself. No matter how weird the process may have been, Shiraishi asks to keep it a secret between the three of them. So the supernatural club was once again reinstated, but the news seems to have already spread because soon Miyabi appears in the room, happy that the club has returned and joins it. She then begins to display all of her useless collection of supernatural things, which seem more junk than supernatural to them. 
Later that day, Yamada sees his name on the list of students who have to perform supplementary exams and asks Shiraishi to switch bodies and clear them for him. After all, the whole point of this power was so that Yamada could improve his grades and become better. All they had to do was kiss, but Miyabi keeps interrupting them and adds up chore after chore for Yamada, frustrating him. He gets so irritated that he demands she be removed from the club, but since the members are quite low, Miyamura disagrees. He instead sends her to the council office for new member registration. However, Miyabi wasn't done bothering them just yet. The office was closed so she went back to the club room in a few minutes. When she opens the door to enter, she notices Yamada and Shiraishi kissing. That was enough for her. She is convinced that the two were actually dating and using the club as an excuse. She was really interested in the supernatural club and now feels frustrated believing that the two were actually only interested in themselves and their love life rather than the club, so Miyabi decides to hit back. The next day, flyers are posted all over the school about Yamada and Shiraishi kissing. Miyabi is revealed to be the one behind it. Yamada is furious at Miyabi and demands that she go and clear the news. However, Miyabi has no intention to do so, so he takes matters into his own hands and kisses her to switch bodies. While she is still in confusion, Yamada, now in Miyabi's body, punches his old body rendering her unconscious and rushes out to tell everyone that she had just been lying about Yamada. However, it turns out that no one had believed Miyabi in the first place. He never took her word seriously since she always found the lamest supernatural unbelievable stuff to tell people. Yamada is happy that Miyabi's rumor was of no issue for him, and returns back to the room to switch back, but Miyabi is nowhere to be found. Yamada freaks out and rushes to Miyamura and Shiraishi, and tells the whole thing. He explains that they have to find Miyabi and stop her from telling the truth to anybody in the school, but the problem is no one has seen her. Instead, they find her phone in Miyabi's pocket. Yamada quickly checks it and realizes that she must have gone to the park as the last two emails on her phone are from some people asking her to pay up for the purchase that she had made. It seems that Miyabi had mixed up with some real bad bunch of people and bought some rocks and some other mysterious things from these boys to become popular in school. When Yamada and the group reach there, they notice that the boys had knocked down Miyabi and Yamada's body. Furious, Yamada shows them some of his fighting skills. The hooligans freak out seeing Miyabi so powerful and run away, and will probably stay out of the story like the filler content they are. Now that she knows of Yamada's abilities, the group decides to make her an actual member of the Supernatural Club, and it all turns out just fine. The members then start testing the extent of the powers, no oh boys, there are a lot of kissing going on inside that room. I'm not sure this would even pass the YouTube content violation check to be honest. Holy smokes. Yamada later learns from Miyabi that the student council won't be providing them with a club budget. She claims that she has already spoken with the student council president numerous times, but no matter how long Miyabi waits, he just keeps veering off in irrelevant directions. Miyabi is extremely upset by the situation, but Yamada is unconcerned and questions whether the club genuinely needs money. Miyabi believes that they can transform the space into more of a club area, as long as they have the money. But Yamada seems to be more than content with how the room is currently. Miyamura also mentions that he prefers to keep things simple, to which Miyabi angrily responds that this is because the two of them are filthy boys. Miyabi then lists things they could add to their club room if they had the budget, such as a sofa, a TV, a teapot, and so much more. Suddenly, Yamada takes Miyabi by the shoulders and asks if they could buy a microwave if they received club cash. Miyabi is confused by Yamada's abrupt query but he clarifies that he wouldn't have to consume a cold meal if there was a microwave. No matter how weird it may sound, with the thought of some hot food, Yamada is down with a plan and now is fully focused on getting the club that budget. In an effort to get the president's attention, Yamada kicks open the door to the student council room. Nevertheless, he gets little to no response. The president eventually asks who he is, and Miyamura responds by introducing Yamada after a time. Yamada observes the president's distant demeanor, and Miyamura says that because of the president's unrivaled passion for women, he has completely lost interest in males. In other words, he was a massive pervert and would only talk to women. Either that or he was so far in the closet that coming out was no longer possible. Miyamura believes that after being snubbed by the president, he should just settle down and give up. But Yamada is still keen to earn them more club funding in that microwave and says he has a plan. The club members switch bodies so that Miyamura is now in Miyabi's body and Yamada is in Shiraishi's. They intend to take advantage of the president's allegedly unmatched love for women. So the two men burst into the student council room again and greet him while flaunting their attractive smiles and subtle, quote-unquote, personalities. But the president reveals that he already knows about the body swapping. Yamada and Miyamura are shocked and angry to have been discovered. They wonder how the president discovered it. However, the president's logic behind figuring this out is not at all something to be proud of. The pervert actually smelled the two girls and figured they were not women. He even proudly claims that the two smelled nothing like women. The president promises to give them a budget, but only if he can solve a small problem for the student council. Shiraishi is not planning to go to college, but as she is the highest student at their school, the president deems it a loss for the entire school. So he wants her to go to college and asks them to make her agree to it, if they want their fund to be approved. Yamada assumes that she probably has a lot going at home, 
but the president informs them that her parents also want her to go to college. Shiraishi is essentially refusing to leave. Yamada understands this. The president simply requests that he look into the circumstances around this choice. Yamada grudgingly agrees to the offer and then discusses the president's request with Shiraishi in the club room. Yamada argues that she's smart and she would be wasting her life by not going to college, but she simply explains that she doesn't feel the need to go to college. She says she won't change her mind and then leaves, apologizing for her decision. Yamada, Miyabi, and Miyamura talk about their current circumstances outside their club room. Unfortunately, they all concur that perhaps everything is hopeless after all. Suddenly, two student council members named Odagiri and Oshio enter the scene. Odagiri blurts out insults about the group's club, and Oshio informs them that Odagiri will take over as president of the student council instead of Miyamura. It turns out that Miyamura was gunning for the president position in the next election. Since the members of the student council are chosen by their predecessors, Miyamura discloses that Odagiri is challenging him for the position of president in the upcoming term. But if he convinces Shiraishi to attend college, he completes his objective and will be chosen as the successor. If he does not, his chances of becoming student council president are very slim. As a member of the student council and a friend in the Supernatural Studies Club, Miyamura sincerely states that he wants Shiraishi to attend college. Yamada, however, unexpectedly declines to assist Miyamura in his mission. But Miyamura informs Yamada that he has no choice but to follow the directors of the student council president. The current president was a notorious man and he could go as far as destroying their club if they didn't follow the man's orders. Yamada then grits his teeth and reluctantly agrees to play the little political game that the president was playing with him. He gets fired up and is sure that he will come out victorious after all this. Later, Shiraishi tells Yamada that she wants to switch bodies with him later that day. Yamada is surprised by her direct request, but he agrees and kisses her. Turns out though, she has a cold and now that Yamada has switched bodies, he has the cold and has to suffer on her behalf as she goes to class. Miyabi and Miyamura question why Shiraishi came to school in such awful health, but Yamada tells them that she probably came to school so she could switch bodies with him and still study. However, since Yamada's fever is getting worse, Miyamura suggests they go home to Shiraishi's house. They reach there and realize that she has an awfully cute room even for a girl. Miyamura and Miyabi begin their regular breach of privacy and get kicked out of the room by Yamada. The poor sick boy, or actually girl, rests until Shiraishi returns home, fuming. Apparently, she only went to school to submit one of her works to the teachers and was planning to get back home as soon as possible. But since Yamada went home, she had to search for him all day long. Yamada replies furiously as well, because since she had come to the school herself, she could simply have submitted the work in her own body. The argument goes on for a while until they tie her out and return back to their respective bodies. Yamada scolds her while she lies in her bed, saying that if classes are so essential, she should just go to college. Shiraishi responds that she has nothing else to do but study, and that whether at school or at home, she's alone. Yamada is taken aback and decides to leave. He apologizes for leaving without consulting her and applies a wet towel to her forehead. He then unexpectedly opens up and admits that he regrets going to this high school. He had previously thought it was a dull place, but recently he began to think it might be somewhat amusing. Yamada then wonders aloud if college would be amusing as well. He then claims that with recent developments, he thinks he would like to join a university as well and ask her to join him. Shiraishi smiles and agrees. It seems like a wonderful relationship is just about to begin. Next, there is the regular old school camping trip. As every anime, and Yamada and Shiraishi switch places on the trip so she may stay in the sleeping quarters and study. After spending the day in the company of their classmates as Shiraishi, Yamada realizes that she's growing closer to them and switches back so that she won't have to miss it to study. Nene Odagiri, the other vice president of the school, confronts Yamada about entering the girl's room without permission and threatens to publish photos of him gazing at Shiraishi's underwear. She demands that he somehow convince Shiraishi to not show up for the upcoming mock exam to harm Miyamura's prospects of becoming council president. Yamada is anxious but comes up with a half-decent plan. He somehow convinces Nena to kiss him in the hopes that he can body swap and erase the photos, even though Shiraishi doesn't mind missing the mock exam. However, to his surprise, nothing happens. He's unable to swap bodies with her and the girl simply walks away as if nothing happened. Yamada tells Miyamura and Miyabi about his lost power and they kiss him to verify but their bodies do not exchange either. Back to school, Shiraishi's absent from a mock test as Nene demanded. Yamada is wondering whether Nene would delete the photo or not. When he enters the club room, and weirdly so, Miyamura and Miyabo offer him their lunch with lots of love. A little too much love, to be honest. He concludes that somehow Yamada's power is now turned into attracting someone towards him instead of switching bodies. Yamada tells them to keep it hidden from Shiraishi until the matter is resolved, believing that Nene has something done with his powers. He opens the door, lo and behold, Shiraishi is standing there wanting to kiss him to exchange bodies. He resists and runs to find Nene to regain his power. He cannot find her, instead finds some students holding some weird stuff. These students run away as soon as they see him, however, they drop a secret book containing a list of grades. On the other hand, Nene has completely fallen in love with Yamada, and her boyfriend Ashiyo comes to fight Yamada because he thinks that he has done something to Nene. 
Elsewhere, Shirishi thinks that Yamada has gone sick of kissing her. That's why he's refusing, but Yamada tells her the absolute truth. Regardless, Shirishi asks him to kiss her, claiming that she didn't care if she fell in love with him. After giving him a kiss, they switch bodies. They learn Shirishi has the capacity to switch bodies, but Yamada has the ability to mimic others' abilities. Nene, who has been seeing this, becomes very alarmed upon realizing he has fallen under her own spell and fallen for Yamada. Uchiha listens to all their talk and begs Yamada to bring Nene to normal because he loves her so much. Yamada remembers the days back in middle school when Ushio was his only friend, who would have done everything for Ushio, and he did as well. Ushio ended up in a fight with some random boys and Yamada helped him, but after the fight, as he had told everyone that Yamada was the only one who fought, as a result, everyone ended up hating Yamada in school. Regardless of the opportunity to take revenge, Yamada decides to become the better man and kisses Nene and her love for Yamada ends. At the end, the club receives a mysterious book, labeled Volume 1, that states that there are seven such witches in school. They decide to go find them. The Supernatural Studies Club has some summer fun at the beach, except for Yamada, who must take supplementary classes nearby. Sucks being bad at school, doesn't it? He switches bodies with Shiraishi and asks her to cover the exams in the class. Shiraishi solves all the examples and everyone gets amazed. Meiko, another girl in the classroom who acts weird and kisses Shiraishi forcefully. However, Shiraishi comes back and discusses the whole thing. Yamada had known her since last year because she always failed and repeated the same subjects every year. They conclude that Meiko is a witch and has some powers. After some careful and not so easy investigation, they realize that her power is telepathy. Yamada manages to kiss her and takes her ability. They need it as well, since they need to pass the next mock exam to get the keys to the old supernatural club room where they hope to find the volume 2 of the book. They do pass the exam, but turns out the old room has already been cleared and everything has already been trashed. However, their pursuit of the witches is not yet over. Meiko informs the group that Maria Sarushima, a fourth witch, has been missing from school. When Yamada and Toranosuke visit Maria, she discloses to Yamada that she has the powers to see the short-term future, and that she had a dream in which the old school would burn down and they would be held responsible. She had made an effort to avoid this by avoiding the school, but things hadn't changed in their visions. There was also Kentaro Tsubaki, the man she had kissed, who might be related to the vision. Yamada investigates this Kentaro guy and comes to find out that he has two specific traits. One, he likes Shiraishi, and two, he loves to fry tempura in the building. Yep, this is definitely the guy who's gonna burn down the school. The night of the alleged fire, the club tries to arrange for Kentaro to go shopping with Yamada while posing as Urata, but the vision is still the same. The fire will still happen. During the date, Kentaro musters up his courage and confesses his feelings to Shiraishi, but is rejected. The man runs like a little girl back to the school to do what he loves most after Shiraishi, fry tempura. However, just as he is about to turn on the burner and destroy the school, Yamada and Shiraishi arrive and stop him. They come clean and convince him to stop and perhaps use his time elsewhere. Kentaro then joins the Supernatural Club instead, and the day is saved. The club is then tasked with putting a stop to a group of troublemaking upperclassmen. Noah Takigawa, who has the ability to see someone's past weakness, leads the gang. Yamada tries but fails to persuade Noah to stop what she's doing. When Noah's lackeys trash the club room and steal their notebook, they learn from Yamazaki that Noah intends to exterminate the witches in order to transfer their powers to her friends. They kidnap Noah's friends and try to persuade her to back down. Despite her refusal, Noah's friends eventually persuade her to let it go. In all this, Yamada notices that Noah has some other motives behind her actions that are just creating chaos all around. Noah unsurprisingly kisses him. I mean, at this point, we all know the show is just about kissing. The kiss then transfers her powers to Yamada, who now gets to see all of her past trauma that lead to her being this way. Realizing that she needed to do what she did, Yamada decides to help her and helps Noah and her friends clear their names. During the school festival, Maria Sarushima asks Yamada if there's a way to get her power erased. Yamada meets Shinichi Taki, who can do just that but he currently is holding the ability to turn invisible to whomever he kisses. He agrees to erase Maria's ability if he can become student council president. So in order to make that possible, Yamada goes to the president, perverts Hamura, and asks him who he will choose as his successor. However, Hamura doesn't tell him anything. Instead, the man announces a tournament in which the person or group who can bring the name of the seventh and final witch can choose the next successor. Yamada decides to do just that. Later, however, when Maria gets super happy that he will finally help her and kisses him, he gets her powers and sees a vision of the future that he was about to create, in which Taki would be the president, but Shiraishi as the vice president would be very unhappy. Resolving that he cannot let Shiraishi be unhappy, he decides to find some other way to help Maria and for now, support Miyamura for the successor's role. Later, Miyamura tells him about his dropout sister who could know the name of the seventh witch. Yamada switches his body with Shiraishi and insists on telling him the name but his sister refuses and informs him about the consequences. Fenchu says that his memories related to all witches would be erased, but he agrees anyway. He gets to know that the seventh witch is Sion Jirika. He directly goes to the president and tells him the name. In return, the president announces that Miyamura would be the next president. 
Now Yamada waits for his memory to be erased, but he still remembers everything. Instead, the memory of Yamada from all his other club members is erased. He gets heartbroken, but it is too late to change anything. In the classroom, Shirashi asks Yamada why he had come into the club room, but he doesn't tell her anything, and accepts that he's forgotten. He asks her for a date, but she refuses. So Yamada freaks out and furiously vows to restore the memories of the supernatural group. Taki arrives and tells him that they were on the same page and their memories did not fade away because they were exceptional. He then suggests kissing Nin to get his charm power and then apply it to Shireshi. Later that evening, Yamada manages to kiss Nin, but adding to his bad fate, Shireshi passes by and sees both of them kissing and feels betrayed. Yamada tries to convince Shiraishi, but she stops him and confesses to him that she loves Miyamura. Yamada is surprised to find out that for all club members, the memory of Yamada was replaced by Miyamura. Yamada doesn't give up and tries hard to get their memory back. He kisses Miyamura to see if they could exchange their memories, but gets in trouble. Miyamura gets flirtatious and kisses him back to eradicate the power of the charm. On the other hand, Nin kisses Ashia to free him from the power of charm and confesses her love for Yamada. However, Yamada stops her while Taki gets furious that he should be the next president. So he decides to help Yamada. They conclude that they have to collect all seven witches at the ritual place and their memory would be restored. Yamada kisses all six witches, but the seventh one is too dangerous and couldn't be handled easily. On the other hand, Nin gets the offer to get her love if she stops Yamada from gathering all seven witches, but she sacrifices her love for Yamada's happiness. She thinks Yamada loves Hiraishi and he should get her. Then she begs for help from the seventh witch and asks about her reality, but the witch refuses to say anything and doesn't help either. The president plays a game with Yamada and sends his secretary as Shiraishi, then goes to Yamada and asks him for a kiss, but Yamada understands that she's not Shiraishi and moves to the president. He threatens to move out all of this, but Yamada gets furious and challenges him to find Shiraishi at any cost. The president tells him that Shiraishi has been expelled and only the president and club members can meet her. However, Yamada and his friends reach out to Mimura's sister. They ask her for a solution, and she tells them that it is the president's trick to call Taki and all witches in one place. They go to the seventh witch and try to make her against the president. The sister tells them the truth that in the past, she and the president were real friends, but then the president got to know the seventh witch. His memories got erased. Due to this, she also wanted to remove her painful memory related to him. Miyamura's sister meets the seventh witch and is about to remove her memory, but she stops and wishes to meet the president one last time. The president does not recognize her, instead has strange feelings for her. On the other hand, Yamada brings Shiraishi back from the secretary's house and they switch their original bodies. The president surrenders and everyone performs their ritual. The seventh witch was the president's dear friend, so she also decides to help Yamada and grants him a wish. She kisses him to transfer all his abilities to him and also asks him to make a wish. All seven witches perform the rituals and time froze when they kissed. After some time, they all got their memories back. Back at the club room, Yamada is warmly welcomed and they throw a party for his entry to the group again. They all are delighted. Suddenly, the president walks in and asks what his wish was during the ritual. He reveals that he had wished to eradicate the power of all wishes so that everyone could live a normal, happy life. Later, Yamada and Shiraishi are standing on the rooftop where it started. They confess their love and kiss to verify whether or not their powers were eradicated. But there is no change in their body, which means they no longer have any magical powers. They accept it gracefully and continue to live their life. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.